Good morning. It's Saturday morning, October 27, 2018. This is Ron Brown. I uh, want to go over some uh, changes that I've made uh, to the uh, HGSI files. Uh, these are my files, uh, which I've maintained for years, and uh, they are now classified under the market analysis user groups. Uh, what I decided to do is uh, take a few folders out, which are duplicates of the industries and sectors folders up here because uh, that was adding to the processing time. They are calculated up here in the uh, reference groups and uh, they were also being calculated down here in my user groups. So I moved the industry groups out and the sectors and the sectors by industry. There's no need to duplicate those. So if you want to do analysis on any of those, just do them up here in the uh, reference groups which are kept up to date. I've also made several other uh, changes which I'm uh, going to cover. I'll probably do a, uh, a webinar on Thursday if things uh, work out for me and uh, I'll go over some of these other things. But uh, let me point out what I have here. I have the Major Markets Plus, Major Markets ETF, Spider, Broad Market Indices, uh, a more focused view of the indices, uh, the Spider sectors, and then I go into the ETF worldview most popular ETFs, and then uh, iShares ETF rotation and so on. Uh, let me just show you a couple of things with this fast-moving uh, market, which is uh, really uh, volatile at the moment. If you want to uh, trade both the long and the short side and uh, do it with uh, ETFs, you can uh, come down here. I'm going to go to the Ultra 2X long and short. You can see that there are 68 of them in here. Yeah, there on the uh, 3x there are only 13 but if you want to do the 2x or even the 1x which only contains 23 uh, this is easy to do uh, within uh, HGSI especially if you're using uh, thinkorswim or uh, the uh, updating uh, uh, with uh, uh, the other data provider I use thinkorswim running in the background and this works very well I'll just go to the uh, uh, 1x for now. I'll click through to the uh, warehouse and then uh, I have, uh, even though it's Saturday morning, I have Thinkorswim running in the background and I'm going to go uh, to my intraday views and um, I'll go to the quick start, top down prospecting and uh, if you go to number two, the scorecard ETFs intraday, uh, this is something that you can let uh, run during the day and stay on top of the market and uh, possibly even uh, take some positions. Here's the QQQ shorts. This is the PSQ. Uh, what you want to do if you're using this, a lot of these really do not trade much volume. So you want to come over this 90-day uh, volume column and make sure that you're trading a liquid uh, ETF. Now I put some others in here uh, which are uh, low volume. I just wanted uh, these in here to uh, show that uh, or where the strength and weakness is. Now here is the oil and gas short pro shares. It only trades uh, 818 shares on a 90-day uh, moving average volume. You'll never trade that. Don't even mess with it, but it at least will give you a feel for what's going on in these markets. Now look at the, oh, let me go back to raw combo. Uh, these are shorted on the uh, intraday percentage price change one day, so uh, the strongest uh, ETF uh, based upon the percentage price change will be at the top. This is the actual price change. This is the intraday. So you can see the QQQ short is at the top of the list and it was uh, uh, moving up. It's been moving up uh, very sharply as uh, this uh, market sell-off has proceeded. Now you can do this with any of these groups. Here's the Ultra 2X long and short. It'll give you a much broader view of what's going on in the market. You can see that uh, uh, there are some country ETFs in here and so on. Here's Brazil. Uh, this is the Ultra Brazil. Uh, this this has been moving up nicely, but what do we do? We go over here and we look at the 90-day moving average volume, and it's not very liquid. So make sure you uh, look at uh, the liquidity. 
Uh, once again, I put these in here because I wanted to see a complete rotation. Now you can see that there are no quotes uh, in uh, Thinkorswim for these two down here. So just don't pay any attention uh, to any uh, ETF that uh, does not have a quote. Look at look how low the volume is on here. I should probably just get rid of those two, which I just did. So they've been eliminated. And I'll make sure that's updated in the file. But uh, uh, these are to give you an opportunity, all of these, to uh, uh, watch the uh, long and short side of the market uh, intraday. I also moved the currency ETFs up here. And another thing I did is I put the uh, PowerShare Dividend Achiever stocks in here. These are uh, maintained by PowerShares. They're up in the uh, reference groups. And I'll update this group uh, on a regular basis, but uh, uh, because Matt and George uh, gave us the uh, nice uh, uh, chart or the addition to the uh, uh, fundamental frame on charts, I decided this would be a good thing to do because these are stocks that have a history of uh, maintaining dividends or even growing their dividends. So uh, if I, uh, well, I I put this index within the broad market indices. I'll show that in a second. But I decided, well, I might as well put the PowerShares uh, industry groups in here too. So I just made industry uh, groups of uh, these PowerShares. And if I go into my warehouse and then if I go to the end of day and go to uh, number four, it'll show you how many stocks are contained in each one of these groups that were created from the PowerShares. And you can see it created uh, 90 groups. A lot of them only have one stock, as you can see if you scroll down here. But still, I think this is very helpful because you can go into the ranking module and you can see where the strength is within these dividend achievers. And uh, even if there's only one stock, you'll know that that uh, that group is doing well. Let's take a look at the specialty apparel stores. I'll change to that. You can see that here's the index. There's only two stocks in here. And let's just look at these charts. So you have a, a TJX companies. It's been uh, very strong. It looks like it's uh, finding support right now. If you go to your fundamental panel and click up on this, uh, this will show you the uh, dividends, yearling trip. Yearly dividends trailing 12 months, and you can see since 07 that these dividends have been increasing steadily. Uh, it yields 1.3%. So you have a strong stock with uh, dividend growth. Let's take a look at Ross stories while I'm here. And you can see the dividend uh, dipped on uh, this day, or 2016, but it's, it's growing again. The dividend yield is 0.9%. Uh, uh, percent, but still a relatively strong stock. Now don't be misled by uh, the colors here uh, because uh, we're only calculating uh, two stocks in the index, so that doesn't mean anything. You really need to bring the charts up. So just a, a, a way to look at uh, dividend stocks, find strength. Uh, so if you find a strong stock that's moving up with a uh, higher highs and higher lows and it's yielding a dividend, uh, that's a bonus. Okay, I'm going to move back to my groups. And by the way, if you update the market analysis user groups, and I'll put this up there for uh, uh, everyone under the add-on for market analysis user group. But any of the other changes I've made uh, uh, to screens and so on, those are only for the Insider Club, and I'm not going to have uh, time to cover those today. But uh, I'll do a webinar uh, sometime this uh during the upcoming week, and I'll show you a bunch of new changes that I've made to help help us uh, find stocks uh, more efficiently. What I do want to do next, though, is go into my broad market uh, indices, and uh, you can see that when I sort on here, and uh, I'll just go to a different uh, view. I'll just do this. We'll see where the strength was. This is based upon the percentage price change one day and uh, I put the power chairs dividend achievers in here and uh, you can see that uh, the index is down uh, 
minus 1.3% on Friday, down 3.2% for the week. But let's see how it stacks up over the long term in the ranking module. And you can see that uh, I am using E and slow, which is based upon six months. And the power chairs, dividend achievers are right up near the top in this uh, rough market environment. Here are the utilities, uh, the industrials, healthcare, utilities again, and then power shares. Uh, look at the socks. It has just been a disaster for tech stocks uh, over the past few weeks, as uh, we all know. While I'm here, I, I think I'll take a quick look at uh, the indexes. I'm going to get out of the ranking module, and uh, I'm just going to go to, I'll sort on name. Uh, I want to go to the 50% All Stocks Institutional Index. These are stocks that have at least 50% institutional sponsorship. These are updated today, by the way, so make sure you uh, download the add-on. Anyway, I am... What I've done is I've gone directly into the HGSI index charts under end of day charts and I'll run through uh, this chart very quickly. You can see that distribution uh, has been uh, really strong. These are, this is D um, distribution. It's shot up here, pulled back a little bit to E and then it's back up in the D range. This is uh, uh, D and E distribution and this is A and B accumulation. There's just no accumulation. I'll run through these very quickly. Uh, this just shows the rotation in and out. Chart number two. Uh, this uh, adds uh, chicken money flow. You can see money has been flowing uh, out of these stocks. And uh, uh, once again, uh, this shows you the distribution at D or E, I'm sorry. And uh, this is uh, number chart number four. Uh, this is the uh, advanced decline line. Notice how it always stayed above the moving average until uh, recently, and it started breaking down. In fact, it's if I put a crosshair on here, it was right at the peak there, and then it started rolling over, and you can see it went down through the moving average. Notice how the volume has been picking up as fear has been increasing. Now, this is a uh, chart that I use a lot uh, it's uh, chart number five. This is a percent above the 20, 30, 50, and 200-day uh, moving average. A percentage of stocks within any index that's above those numbers. And look right here at the percent of stocks above the 50. Only 8.65% of the stocks within the 50% All Stocks Institutional Index are above their 50-day moving average. And if I go back here to this peak... And notice that this line had started coming down on all of these uh, right here. And that it goes back to uh, the 1st of September. So distribution was starting there, even though the market was going up. And if I click on that date right there on the 4th, which is a Tuesday in September, notice that if I when I go back to this, uh, the percent above the 50-day was 61.44%. So there has been a tremendous amount of damage done. Now I'm going to go back here, look at this number one more time, and you can see it's down to 8.65%. The percent above the 200-day moving average is only 29.4. Go back up to the same date on that, it was 64.09. So uh, just a tremendous amount of damage. Anyway, this chart is a good chart to use to see accumulation and distribution because you can see the percentage of stocks uh, moving above or uh, moving above or staying above uh, certain moving averages. I'll move down quickly. Uh, this is a, a chart I put together years ago when I was with Ian. And uh, it shows potential buys and sells. Here was a potential buy, which turned out to be good. This was a potential buy. And notice how choppy it's been recently. It can't make up its mind. Potential buy, a yellow warning, not a green warning. And that was on uh, Thursday. And then on Friday, a potential sell. So it uh, moves very quickly. You can see this is clear down well below the 200-day exponential moving average. And if you look back over here, we're down in the uh, uh, same area uh, where we were in February. So the gains have been uh, wiped out uh, for the year on most of these indexes. Uh, this is just a different chart showing the uh, AD line and the percent above the 50. 
And then the final chart I look at is a cumulative high-low line. Uh, this is a two-year chart, and notice that this is the first time in two years that this line has gone below its moving average, which uh, is not good because on all these other corrections, look back here in February, it stayed well above it, but now it's fallen below. So uh, that is a another warning sign to be careful. Now, I don't want this video to get too long. I hate sitting through long videos, uh, so I try not to do them. But uh, uh, let me just uh, show you one thing that I put in um, this last week for uh, Insider Club members. This is These will only be in the Insider Club files. I'm going to go to All Securities. Uh, I'll hit my alternate key and spacebar at the same time. You can see it takes me to All Securities. And I'm going to go to... Uh, my top-down views and uh, on, I don't mean on, I should say in folder number three. Uh, there's uh, three new view views here. This, These are stocks and uh, industry groups that uh, have moved up one in five days. In other words, they're higher now than they were uh, both one and five days ago. And you can see that there are very few groups in here. Let me sort on the raw combo. That'll uh, straighten the groups up. Educational services, autos, home builders, building subcontractors, and uh, one in insurance services or a group insurance services. Now, if I limit this to uh, groups with the fan up or stocks with the fan up, you can see there's one stock. So a very weak market. If you're looking for box stocks, uh, one in five days uh, right here, these are all box stocks. These are the box numbers. And you can see that there are several within the home builders group. Now I'm going to go to a view that was in there before. Stocks and groups up one day. In other words, these, this is number one. These are groups that were up on Friday and stocks within those groups that were up on Friday. So it... Uh, you can see that there, there, were, there were quite a few, actually, even though it was another disastrous day. If I bring up the Spectrum Analyzer, uh, you can see that uh, there were 38 groups, if you look right here, uh, that were actually up on Friday. And the stocks, like I said, within these groups also had to be up. Because they were up and... Uh, I, I'm just going to look for some uh, online or, I'm sorry, long side trades. And I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm in all securities, stocks in groups that were up one day. I'm going to hit my alternate G key and I'm going to make a group out of this. Well, I didn't uh, get that typed in, but that's all right. It's making the group. Stocks in, let me go rename that so I get it right. Edit the group. Okay. And I'm going to go into that group. And you can see that these are sorted by industry. Now you can do secondary sorts if you want to, but I'm not going to do that instead. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring up my views and I'm just going to run through a few things here. So we know these stocks were up on Friday and uh, I'm just going to click on scorecard. Now I've added, these are for insiders only. Uh, I know a lot of people like to play cheap stocks. So I decided to put a 1A in here. Stocks under $5 in this. There's 59 of them. So there's a lot of stocks in here. And if I bring this up and if I go to a chart, go to my stock analysis charts, I'm just going to use chart number two because it has a group in it too. You can see that these are some little stocks. Now a lot of people don't want to play these stocks, but a lot of people do. Uh, look at the move right here. Look at this pocket pivot coming off of here. So that was the close. It dipped down the next day just out of curiosity. Alternate A. We can measure from here to the close on Friday. 
uh, this stock was up 36.6% over nine periods from this. So had you bought at the open the following day off of this pocket pivot and also the VPOC and the uh, expansion contraction turning positive, uh, that is a very nice gain. So I decided, uh, you know, why not? Because uh, uh, I may start uh, playing some of these stocks because a lot of them uh, do really well. Now here... I want to get rid of this and hit my alternate A key, get rid of here. Uh, the percentage move up was 8.53% on the day. Uh, this one's trending down, though. Uh, I'd probably stay away from that. Here's Hovanian in the Home Builders. Let's see what this one's done over the past few days. Here's a VPOC signal here. Uh, and then there's an effort to rise on Friday, and it moved up 7.5%. 0.4%. Remember, I'm using this group that I created. Another thing I did is I decided to put a uh, 2A in here, stocks end of day, $15 and down, trading at least half a million shares. A lot of people say they play stocks in this range. So uh, I am uh, not putting a low end on this, but I'm making sure that these trade half a million shares. Just look at this one. Uh, look, look at this beautiful chart here on a stock uh, that started moving on this pocket pivot back here. Expansion contraction came in. Uh, the VPOC also came in. So on that day, say you bought on the o open the next day. All theoretical, of course. So from that point to that point, what's this done? 17 periods up 37%. Yes, these stocks can make you nervous, but uh, all stocks can make you nervous. Uh, we know that. Look what's happened to some of the leaders in this market. Anyway, these are a couple of things I, I put in there that only for the Insider Club. If you want these, uh, you can uh, join the Insider Club. But l let's just go through a couple other things here. Uh, here's scorecard end of day. 351 securities. I'm sort of done raw combo. What this uses is my uh, end of day combo, and the, these are going to be uh, some of the stocks that are moving up uh, on heavy volume. As you can see, here's a pocket pivot and effort to rise. Here, here was stopping volume on this right here, and it's starting to move. So you're going to find uh, stocks with a, with a lot of enthusiasm behind them uh, in this view. Just going to click through a few more. Look at look at these good-looking stocks here. Now, th these are just all scorecard stocks. If you want to uh, uh, look at the uh, stocks, uh, fifteen dollars and down, it's got the same combo on it. So you can find these stocks. Very, very easy to look for them. It's tougher to trade them, I will admit, but uh, at least. Uh, you can go through these. These have uh, bullish VPA flags today and so on. If you want to limit to stocks that are in the fan formation with a bullish VPA flag today, here's one right here. What do I mean by in a flag formation? I'll go to view number one. Uh, the uh, fan is spread out with the 200, the 100, the 50, and the 18. This is a stock that looks like it's setting up. Let's go back to the prior chart. You can see that the group has turned up. Here's an effort to rise. One that should go in your watch list for Monday if you're interested in it. Now let's look at Frontline. Number two. Now here's the pocket pivot here. Here's an effort to rise. Another effort to rise. What's the group doing? Same group. It turned up. Now this is, uh, I believe this is shipping. Marine shipping. No dividend on this stock. But marine shipping. Um. It held a shakeout here, held up. Here's effort to rise, effort to rise. So you can see that there were some stocks moving up on Friday, stocks and groups. Now, Viking Therapeutic, uh, this this one is uh, forming a base. Gapped up here. It's been drifting down since. Uh, no revenue, biotech. And uh, so on. I'm not going to go through these. These are things that we can uh, do in the uh, webinar when I do it, hopefully on Thursday. I've got a lot more things to show you. One more thing that I do want to uh, show you that I put in uh, for the insiders. 
Okay, we're, let me choose a group here. I'm just going to go to all securities after all. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to go down to my uh, market analysis user groups and I'm going to go into all stocks institutional. And I'm going to go to the end of day and I'm going to go to number eight. This is a percentage return a beginning of the year. And if you sort on the sort on the combo and uh, look at this, it's going to show you the stocks or indexes or any anything uh, else in HGSI and the return since the beginning of the year. And you can see that in this is a telecom carrier NIHD. And let me zoom out on this. Has, is up since the beginning of the year. 1390%. So it's uh, made quite a move and it looks like it uh, may go again. Now here's tandem diabetes. Uh, we've all seen this one. This is a nice tight chart. It's broken down since. The gain is 13.136%. Uh, I'm sorry, 13, 13.6% for the year. Uh, it's It's got a lot of uh, resistance to go through now. Look at this group. It's a tank. But this is just a way to get a quick read on uh, what's going on or what has gone on. Now, one more thing, and I'm, I'm going to finish it off. Once again, this is an, under the top-down process views for market and group analysis. Uh, you can apply this view to anything. So I just put it in here, and I decided that... Uh, it's a different number because uh, there's one, I do not have an earnings screen in the uh, intraday, but if you click on this for uh, intraday, I'm using the same combo, and I thought, well, what would he, what's a, a good approach to this would be to sort on the same combo and see which of these stocks, which have had massive gains, are following through. So let's just look at, uh, I'm sorted on raw combo. You can see this. With an entry the next day, just put this on here quickly. Would have been right here. How much is this gain through Friday? up 120.9% over 53 periods. Uh, massive gain. Uh, uh, this is why I decided to uh, put that $5 screen in because there are a lot of stocks uh, that are that are nice tight charts that, uh, that do very well. Okay, that's it. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to do a webinar on Thursday if things work out for me and we'll cover some of this stuff in depth. Uh, uh, I am not putting some of these screens out there for general consumption. Uh, if you uh, want them, you uh, have to be a member of the Insider Club. Thank you for listening. Have a good weekend. And uh, let's uh, hope the market uh, stabilizes next week.